Hello guys, so welcome to lab 10. So in this lab, we're gonna study the common emitter amplifier. It's a really extensive lab, you know, you have uh, three experiments and we're gonna continue, you know, in the next uh, week with another you know, two experiments based also on common emitter amplifier. So basically we're gonna uh, study the effect of different parameters on the amplification, you know, so uh, as we see last lecture last week, uh, common emitter amplifier amplification or the gain is affected by many parameters. One of them is, uh, you know, the, the load resistance, uh, also the R signal. And we're gonna study this week, you know, the effect of RE, degenerate resistance, you know, it's not studied yet, which is basically a resistance that is connected between the emitter and the ground. But this will be next week, okay? So in the beginning, uh, we're gonna, you know, uh, determine or measure uh, the open loop gain, the gain with no uh, load. I mean, there is no, as you see here, guys, in the in, in the screen, there is no uh, R load, okay? Then uh, we're gonna put R load and check again the volt is, uh, you know, the amplification gain. It will, of course, be reduced. Then we're going to remove the load again and put here internal resistance. You know, of course, this this source here, you know, the input signal basically that we want to amplify is an ideal one. It has no internal resistance. We can play with the model, but it's better to put it outside. So we're going to put, you know, external resistance here. We call it our signal okay, to model internal resistance. And again, we're going to measure the gain and we're gonna find it, you know, reduced, okay? So let's go into that. We have here different probes to measure, you know, the DC characteristics like IB, IC, VC. And why is that is important? Because we need to calculate the theoretical values R by. If you guys remember from our last week, R by is, uh, is a very important parameter that appears only in EC equivalent circuit and R by is equal to VT, which is a thermal voltage, 25 millivolts over IB, IB capital. You know, it is basically the DC Q point or the DC value of the base current. So we need all of that. Okay, that's why we, we're gonna make two things today. We're gonna measure DC components and AC components using the scope here. So let's st let's start by the open loop. This video basically for the open loop uh, uh, open loop gain voltage gain. Open loop voltage gain means the gain without with no load connected. And as we see here, there is no load. So this is basically the capacitor should connect the collector to the load, but there is no load. It's it's connected directly to the so voltmeter. I'm sorry, the oscilloscope. And the oscilloscope has uh, an infinite input resistance, just like the voltmeter. Okay, so there is no load here, the load is infinity. Okay, so uh, we're gonna construct this circuit in here. Okay, then we're gonna run it, you know, measure the different uh, DC parameters. We have, for example, here, uh, this node voltage is VBE because the emitter is, is zero. So the voltage of the base is basically VBE. Uh, this current probe here will measure IB. I, I know it's not that clear, but it's in here. 9.5 microamperes and VBE is 0.625 millivolt. Here is IC, although we're gonna, we don't, we'll not use it. It's 0 0.955. It's basically a hundred times IB, okay? And here is basically VC, it is five, 5.2. 5 and why I'm showing this VC because it's in the middle of VCC. As we guys, you know, uh, studied in the, when we studied the, the transfer characteristics, we found that uh, usually you put VDC, the Q point at the middle uh, of the characteristic at VCC over two, okay? So, and why is that? To get, you know, maximum gain. One last note here is that we should change the model of this transistor. You see this guy, guys, this asterisk, this asterisk means that the model of this transistor has been changed. This transistor basically has a beta of uh, 220. 
So I change it to 100 just to make you know the calculation easier because usually when we uh, when we solve you know circuits in our lecture we assume beta is 100. So I change it this uh, the beta the model of that transistor just to make it easier for you to calculate. Okay. Uh, so in the beginning we're gonna change the you know the the beta the model. So I'm gonna show you how to, how to do that. So basically, uh, we go here, we choose uh, a value, edit model, and it's here. It's forward, max, yeah, this one, BF, beta forward, basically. Ideal maximum forward beta, okay? This originally is, to, if, if, I, if I reset it to default, look, 220, but I change it to 100, just double click there, it's easy. And the change the component, that's it. Let's say yes, yes. If we go back, it will be 100. So we are good. Okay. Here it is. And once it's changed, you will see this asterisk. That means the model is changed. Okay. Uh, then we collect these values and put it in this, in this table in here. And after that, we should calculate our by. And VT is uh, 25 millivolt. Just about IB here, the 9.57, but we converted first to milli, and R by will be in ohms. Okay. After that, we should, yeah, we should, of course, calculate the theoretical value. So, uh, theoretical value, this is just a problem. It's just like a problem that you're going to solve. Okay. You have the, the circuit, you know, you're going to solve it in DC. We're going to study this week. In the lecture, uh, you know, how to solve, uh, you know, amplifier circuits in DC and AC. We see last week only the AC portion with no numbers, just symbols and expressions to study, you know, in depth the common emitter. This week, we're going to study problems on common emitter. And we see gonna, we're going to see numbers. We're going to calculate. We're going to use the calculator. And we're going to do the DC part and the AC part as well. Okay. So that's why. Uh, don't do the, theory, the theoretical part tomorrow in the lab, just if you can, of course, do it, you have time. But just take the measurement, okay? And I'm gonna leave you with, until next week to deliver this, this, this report. Why? To give you time to digest, to, to watch the videos, the lecture videos, digest, you know, the, the topic and start, you know, uh, practice basically on that circuit. This is it's like an assignment, okay? Good. So we can we can we collected the measured values. Then we go and check the output and the input. Okay, we have here the the settings for the oscilloscope, and here is the oscilloscope. Let's check it. So yeah. So the red here is basically the input. So it's, yeah, so the red is the input, V signal. And the output is the green. Why it's green? Because I changed the color of this net to, or this wire to green, okay? And don't think that they are uh, close or the amplification is not high. No, the amplification is high because basically the, the scale is different. The scale is very different, okay? So let's, let's do it. Let's calculate the gain just measures big to big of the input and big to big of the output and just divide divide them on each other look the input you know you don't need to calculate it basically because you have you measure it you can, because you have it basically so the input here the signal is half millivolt to peak so one peak from this uh, black axis to the peak here is the half millivolt so big to week is one millivolt okay just measure the output so let's con concentrate on the output which is channel B. So let's uh, go to the max, good. Let's go here to the min, good. How much it is? 173.5.6 millivolt. So the output is 173.6 millivolt big to big. And the input is one millivolt big to big. So what is the gain? The gain is basically the output, 173.6. Uh, you know, but it's negative because basically this is a common emitter amplifier. And we know that the common emitter amplifier is again is negative. And what is the meaning of, of negative? The meaning is 
the output and the input are out of phase. Look, this is decreasing, this is increasing. Here, this is in decreasing, the opposite. Here is increasing. That's why it's uh, it's a negative. That means they are out of phase, okay, or they have a phase shift of 180 degrees. Okay. And you see, you know, the amplification is really high. And usually, you know, BHD transistors are, is famous for their high high gains. Okay, especially as a common emitter. So one basic uh, one basic advantage of the common emitter amplifier is, is that they have very high gains, voltage gains. Okay. That's basically, you know, guys. Of course, you should also determine the theoretical value. Okay. Uh, the theoretical value of beta, remember, is 100. RC, you have it. RC is a 5 kilo ohms. And R by is VT over IB. But since this is a theoretical value, both IB that you will calculate theoretically here, not the ones that you measured. Okay, but they will be, they will be very close, extremely close. Okay. But I will leave that to you. Okay. This is basically uh, the first experiment. Now we're gonna go to the second experiment, okay? In which we're gonna do uh, a tweak in the circuit, the same circuit, exactly the same circuit. I just added our load. So let's stop that one. I have it already here. This is guys, exactly, exactly 100% the same circuit. In which we we measured the open loop amplif uh, the open loop ampli amplification, but I just connect this green wire with a load resistance of five thousand ohms or five kilo. Let's change it to kilo because kilo is much more readable and be consistent with the other resistances that we have here in the circuit. Okay, so it's five kilo ohms. Okay, so before anything, let's check the theoretical value of the gain now after putting. You know, this is our load. If we check it, it's minus beta. RC parallel to RL over R bar. This is exactly the same uh, expression as this one. Also here, RC is alone. Here, RC is, RC is uh, has a parallel, you know, uh, combination with RL. Both are five kilo ohms. So the parallel combination would be 2.5, half. That means, AV, which now is not open loop gain, it's just a voltage gain, will be halved. So what we are expecting to get half what we get for what we got from you know the first exit. Okay, so let's do that. You know, let's first, you know. So uh, just you know, it was 173 the output. Now let's check the output. So the input, of course, is the same. You know, it doesn't change half millivolt to peak, one, one millivolt to peak to peak. But let's check the output. Should be 173 over two, you know, theoretically. So go to max. Oh, this is basically the. Go to Y max. And this guy go to Y min. Good. Oh. Here it is, 88.9 millivolt. This is approximately half 173 or 176. I can't remember exactly what we get in the first experiment. Okay, uh, but 90 plus 90 is 180. So uh, 88 plus 88 is uh, 176, yes. So yeah, it's approximately 50%, uh, okay. So that's exactly what we were expecting to get something half what the open low voltage gain. So and that's really, you know, uh, a bad consequ consequence. When you add a load, you know, uh, the characteristic of the circuit changes and it basically become worse. Okay. Uh, so the, ide the ideal case is that you don't have a load, but this is not practical because basically we want this amplification to amplify uh, a signal that's going to be fit to uh, some load, like a mic, for example. I'm sorry, a speaker, for example. Okay. So, yeah, that's the effect of the load. And you should consider that all the time that the load will decrease the gain. 
So basically, if you want to amplify 10 times, this 10 times should be calculated or should be designed including the resistance because without the resistance you get and you if you if you design without the resistance and you get the amplification of 10 then when you add the resistance the load it would it would decrease okay that's basically the second experiment let's see now go to the third x it's basically a third parameter <laughs> and this time is uh, the internal resistance of the input signal v signal okay so let's stop this, stop the idea, stop. Internal resistance, yes, here it is. Okay, what I have done here is that I have two options, either to play with the model, let's check this, because some, yeah, I think it has this or doesn't have, let's check. It doesn't have, so some sources in multi-sim allows you to put internal resistance, but this guy doesn't, doesn't have this option. But you, if you, if it is, you can you can add and you can you can kind of, you can add from the model itself. Since the model doesn't have, and actually I prefer this, uh, I put it outside. One may say this is not series with uh, no, it's a series, my friend, because basically this wire here goes to the oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is open circuit. So the scope is just like a voltmeter. It has infinite input resistance. Okay, so. R signal and V signal, you know, can be modeled as internal resistance of V signal. Okay. Good. For anything, let's check the theoretical value of, of the measure of the value. So the theoretical, I'm sorry, of the gain. Uh, the gain in this case, okay, is the overall gain, the overall voltage gain, which is basically uh, VO over V input here, which now, now V input and V signal are different. If you guys remember in last week when we studied the common emitter amplifier, we said that we have two terms here. We have the, uh, the input signal and we have input voltage. Remember input voltage is the voltage across the input resistance of the, tra of the transistor amplifier circuit. And it's different from V signal, the internal signal. And why is that? Because the, in, the signal input has internal resistance so some part or some voltage you know will go will be dropped on this r, r signal or internal and the other will go to the input resistance or will go to the amplifier circuit basically and this this is called the input the input of the amplifier but this is the signal they are they are different okay so in that case we calculate the overall voltage gain, gain gv and gv is is equal to av our input over our input plus our signal. Remember, AV here equal to AV naught. The A is uh, over low voltage gain because we don't have, in that case, I am studying each parameter separately. So whenever I add our signal, I remove our load. So I studied one parameter at a time. So that's why I removed here our load. Okay. It's exactly the same circuit that we started with in which we calculated the over low voltage gain. I just add our signal here. That's it. That's what I have done. Okay. So, uh, to calculate, for, for example, or have an idea about this, we should calculate our input. And our input is R1. If we, we're going to solve this this week, we're going to, you know, take an example like this. And we're going to find that our input, the input resistance of the amplifier is R1, parallel R2, parallel R by. To check here the barrel was R by. R by here is two by around 2.6. If you do it using, uh, you know, the theoretical value of IB and the stuff, it will be around 2.6. And here is 10, here is, uh, you know, 130. So the overall, the overall uh, our input will be around also 2.6, okay? So uh, GV is equal to AV, which is 173, guys. If you remember from our first experiment, this is, remember, this is equal to AV node this time because there is no load resistance. And our input is 2.6. Uh, our signal is, uh, I'm sorry, our uh, signal is five kilo ohms. So it's around, we can say one third, one th around one third. Because, you know, 2.6 approximately 2.5, 
uh, and 2.5 is basically half 5 kilo ohms. It's, uh, it's like 2.5 over 7.5, around, of course, it's just approximately. So one over three. So 176 over, let's do it very quick here. 173, I'm sorry, over three. It's 57. Okay, let me check the, the voltage of the first, you know. Well, yeah, 173 or 174, okay. So we are expecting something like this. Let's uh, one like seven, uh, 57, this is basically the calculation here, 57.6, okay. So let's uh, let's uh, you know, run and see. Again, we don't care about the input. We know it's uh, one milli, one milli volts. So let's just calculate or measure the output. Go to max. And this guy will go to min. And here it is, 44.9, 44.5. Yeah, so that's basically, you know, the, the, the overall uh, the overall gain, okay? GV. Yes, of course, it's off from the our estimation, but the memo, our estimation is just approximation because uh, RM is not 2.5, it's 2.6. Uh, and also you have some errors in R by because of the theoretical is different from, you know, the measure, the, the actual measured value. So such, you know, such variations will cause some deviation, okay? But it reduced a lot. That's, that's the basic point, it reduced a lot, okay? From 173 to around uh, 45, this is really a lot. Okay, guys, that was basically the, uh, the, the lab of this week. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.